bricks. And these are the, the concepts to be thinking about if you get the springs, because I'm blowing it off, but it is important. I mean, it'll be on the next exam. It'll be on the next homework. So we're going to think about how to calculate spring forces from Hooke's law. That's probably the little equation you may have seen in high school physics. I don't know. Homework five suggested problems. Yeah, we'll get the solution done for the time. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to use spring problems in force, uh, spring forces in problems, and that'll be a little bit relevant to the exam. We'll do a few example problems with springs. Um, even though springs won't be on the exam, we'll have to think about normal force again. So we'll do a little bit of that as we go. Okay, so the first question is simply uh, to define the form of a spring. Spring is a coiled metal wire, usually, although there are exotic springs out there. Right, a coiled metal wire that causes force proportional to the position. So this is very important in physics. To have something that does this, force proportional to position, leads to very fundamental things. Okay? And if you think about it, you think, well, surely we've done that. No, we haven't. Weight isn't proportional to position. Normal force isn't proportional to position. Tension, tension isn't. Uh, what's the other one we did? Friction, not proportional to position. So this is the first sort of spatially dependent force uh, that we've dealt with. If we draw a string in terms of learning about how they work, we have a wall here, and we have a string here, and we characterize them with something called K. Uh, that we're going to define K is the spring constant. You'll see how you use it in newtons per meter. And springs have a natural length. All right, so the length of the spring is usually we call it L naught. You might need that in a problem, and you might not need it. Sometimes in a problem we just say this is at the origin. Don't worry about the length of the spring. But we usually do. But it does technically have this property, L naught equals the natural length. And by that we mean it's not being compressed, it's not being stretched, so it's not creating any force. But you're about to see how spring creates force, so that means that's the length where it's not doing that. And then what we want to do is put all this on an axis here, say the x-axis, like that, you see. And normally you might be tempted to say, well, the obvious place to put the origin is here, at the end of the spring. Like I said, it's actually better to put it to the natural length. Let's think about the end of the spring, something attached at the end of the spring, and let's have that thing at the origin uh, uh, when the spring isn't being compressed or stretched. So now, then, if we think about the force that we want, is the force, and this is important, the spring applies to the object. It's not the force on the spring. Okay, when you see Newton, when you see Hooke's law, you're thinking about the force the object feels, not the force the spring feels. Now there's a third law, action-reaction pair there, and the spring does feel a force. But we're thinking about the force on the object. So you put it all together, and you get that F equals minus K delta X. Right? And that is Hooke's law. Right there. Why did I put the screen down? Because I have a well, I'll just tell you a story about Hooke. So Hooke came along right before Newton. And he figured out a bunch of the stuff Newton figured out, Robert Hooke. You've probably heard of him from microscopy. He discovered cells and all of biology. Basically put some pond water in a microscope and said, oh my god. Ah. Um, but he also figured out gravitation, all kinds of stuff, right before Newton. Newton was kind of a jerk, remember? Newton was kind of a jerk. And uh, Hooke was a little bit older, 10 years older. So Hooke came along, did all this stuff. And he was going to be like the guy that discovered gravity. And then Newton became the president of the Royal Society. And they moved the building. And oops, they lost all of Hooke's notes. Oops. And they also lost his portrait, so we don't actually know what he looks like. Never found it. How did that happen? So Newton was a little wily, not sure. And then he was, nobody heard of Hooke for like 200 years. And then they started to find stuff and said, wow, this book guy, he did some important stuff. Who was the president of the Royal Society? When it all disappeared? Hmm. Okay. So there's a little. 18th century intrigue for you to get your Monday morning going, Tuesday morning. Um, so this kind of a force is important, this Hooke's Law force, because in physics, uh, it is, we call it a restoring force. And you can probably see why. Um, it pushes back, right? That's the negative sign in Hooke's Law. So you can see if 
something on the end of this gets to displace forward at delta x positive, and it's going to feel a force coming back. So let's draw some of these. So here is a spring um, in a few different conditions. So usually we'll draw like a mass on the spring like that. Because we usually have it pushing on something. And uh, is today's material going to be on the exam? Someone just got here. <laughs> no, today's material is not on the exam. Why did you come? And uh, let's see, so this is L naught. So this is the natural position right here. Right. So there's no force on the mass. But let's see, if we, oh, we stretch it out in M. So we say, well, which way is the force now? Delta X is positive. We, we just place it this way from the natural position. Therefore, the force has to be happening. Of course, and if we compress the spring like that, what have we done? We moved it this way from the natural position. You don't really have to even define an axis. It's just the negative means they're opposite directions. So the force will be that way. So you can see that a spring pushes things back to its uh, rest position. That's what we call it a normal force. So here I would say delta x equals zero, f equals zero. Here I would say delta x positive, so f is negative, here delta x is negative, f is positive. See how it does that? 